Welcome to Shop Saver Minutes. I'm Router Bob. You know, I get a lot of questions that come through email. One of them recently had to do with American made machines. Are American made machines really superior to the imports now? And I thought, you know, well, first off, the quick answer is yes, but I wanted to really unpack that so that you have a little bit better understanding of, of this entire industry and, and how it's evolved. I've been involved with CNC routing for about 25 years. And I've been on all sides of it. I've been I've worked for American manufacturers. I've worked for importers. Uh, I've been involved in software. So I've, I've got a, a somewhat unique perspective of all this. Well, about 25 years ago, and we'll call this phase one, the CNC router business was totally different. First off, the machines were huge, and 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 pretty much CNC routers and woodworking made furniture parts. Now they could be gun stocks and stuff like that, but they're complex parts and almost everything had to be fixtured. So you would create all these vacuum fixtures and the machines themselves were huge. Now here's why. Uh, tool changers early on were not very common. So what happened was it, when you spec a machine out, you had to make sure you had enough heads on the machine for all the tool needs. So if a customer needed four tools, the machine had to have four heads. Also at that period of time, we did a lot of twin table stuff. Now, twin table simply meant you had a left table and a right table, and while one was machining, the other was loading and unloading, and the idea was a twin table machine would be about twice as fast. Now, so now if you, if you look at the requirements of a machine tool like that then, you know, you had all this mass on the tool plate, and we know from our previous videos that if you add mass to the tool plate, um, things have to be bigger all the way from the tool plate to the floor, so that's why you ended up with these huge machines. And at that time, there were just a handful of manufacturers. A couple of them were from Japan, a couple from the U.S. So that's really, that, that was the first phase of CNC routing. You know, what really changed the router business from what we talked about in what I call phase one is a concept called nested base manufacturing. And this is what you commonly see in the cabinet softwares today or actually in panel processing. The idea was to be able to throw a sheet of material on a table and cut a a group of cabinet parts out and the nesting part had to do with how those were placed on the sheet so ideally we wanted to uh, nest them so they fit on the sheet with the least amount of waste okay now a couple things had to happen technologically to make this possible one was flow through fixturing now what you see commonly now is you'll see a vacuum table you'll see a piece of MDF on there you see a vacuum pump vacuums pull through the MDF a sheet of material lays on top of there and it, it's held down while the parts get cut out and typically when we cut through, uh, we, don't, we don't cut huge troughs in the top of the spool, but we try to limit that to five or ten thousandths of an inch. That gives us the ability for every sheet to be different. So that leads you to the concept of what we call at the time zero setup. So the ch setup change between one pattern and the next was virtually nothing. Now the other thing technologically that we had to create for that to work was really automatic tool change. So then you, you all, all of a sudden started seeing automatic tool changers on routers. So now I can take a flat table router with a tool changer and I can make lots of different stuff on it with no setup. Well that led to a concept of lot size one manufacturing. Everybody wanted to be able to get an order for one unit and make it and make money. So that's, that's really what really, really changed the router business because then we went from the type of machines that, that we saw in phase one, huge machines, to something that was smaller. But in each case, these machines were, were basically more expensive than the typical customer's house. So it was still a huge purchase decision uh, for a first time CNC buyer. Now one other thing had to happen to really make Nested take off and that was software. And in 2000, Cabinet Vision introduced Screen to Machine and that basically automated the nesting process, and that's really what opened up the industry for uh, nested-based manufacturing in the U.S. Now, if you look at Europe, <clears throat> the Europeans had a different philosophy, and their philosophy was to use a saw and cut the parts out and then do detailed machining on a machine they called a point-to-point. -point. Well, nesting was an American anomaly. It only was happening here, so the Europeans were a little bit slow to jump into it. But they weren't slow in taking a point-to-point -point machine, putting a vacuum table on it, and selling it directly into the U.S. market and calling it a flat table machine. So they weren't slow in that. <clears throat> you know, the next major change in the CNC router industry in the U.S. had to do with the Chinese influence. About 10 years ago, the Chinese CNC machines appeared. And uh, they were primitive. They made parts. Uh, what they did was they got the price down. And, and so now instead of a machine in the past costing as much as, as a house or more, the machine costs roughly what a pickup truck costs. So that changed the whole purchasing dynamic. 
All right, so then but what happened? Well, here's, here's how this all p played out. The Chinese have never been successful at marketing directly to end users in the U.S. The Europeans can do it, but the Chinese have never been able to do that. And I think part of that is, is cultural, part of that is communication. It's just difficult. So what they've had to do is they've had to take marketing through uh, importers in the U.S. So typically a company that wants to do that goes to China, they go to two or three companies, they buy four or five different models, they bring them in, the, they put their brand on it and that kind of stuff. There's a couple dynamics that make it really, really hard to do that. One is, of course, for the same reason the Chinese companies have not been able to directly market to the consumer in the U.S. is because the machines have things wrong with them usually when they arrive. So that means the importer has to fix that first. So first you have to bring the machines in, you have to go through and find out what's right and what's wrong and hope you figure out everything that's wrong before you ship them. And then they clean them and test them and, and whatever's necessary. The other part of that is uh, they're typically paid for by the time they get here. So you, the machines show up, you already own them. <laughs> so you can't come back and, and say, I'm not going to pay for this because it's because it's not right. So it really puts a burden on an importer. Okay, so then those machines are you know, tested and, and they ship them out and they hope, they hope they got all the problems solved. So that's a total different dynamic. It makes innovation almost impossible because it's so difficult. You're lucky if the machines come in with nothing wrong. You know, it's really difficult to drive the design because of communication. And you may have, you may have a change you want to make to a table or something and the next shipment has them, but the following shipment doesn't. So it's, and you really don't have any recourse. So it makes it really, really tough to do that part of the business. But once again, the contribution of the whole Chinese phase was it got prices down. Okay, now let's take a look at, at where we're at today in the industry. And, and I call this the the post-Chinese influence or the post-Chinese phase because, you know, we've seen the Chinese influence in CNC's for about 10 years. And they've got prices down, but there hadn't been a lot of innovation. Okay, now look at the American machinery business right now. Pretty much the larger builders have always stayed away from the small machines because they don't think they're profitable within their business model. And, you know, most of their business models involve a distributor network and salesman. So there's a lot of cost in that that you actually pay as a consumer that doesn't really have anything to do with the machine you bought. And so, but shop savers said, wait a minute, there's got to be, uh, there's got to be a way to beat this. And, you know, we don't want to be all things to all people. We want to be very, very good in the area that we serve. And so we said, well, wait a minute. Yeah, you can buy machines cheap in China. That's not hard to, to prove. But there's more cost than that. First off, you bring them over, they're shipping. And then you bring them in, and then you've got to find out if, if, if what's changed, what's wrong, what has to be repaired, because you've got to make sure those are corrected. So there's a huge cost there, and sometimes it can be really big. Then you've got to get them branded and, and get them out to your customers. So there's, there's a lot more cost in a Chinese machine than you think by the time it gets to the end user. Well, we said, well, wait a minute, why can we not create a business model that will allow us to build machines that are price competitive, you know, if you look at the same size machine and features, and, and it's turned out that the answer is yes, and, and we have done very, very well by attacking that market. So I guess we're back to, uh, to the original question. <laughs> is, is an American CNC a better value? Absolutely it is. But, you know, now let's, let's summarize what we really talked about here. You know, we took a quick review of the CNC industry in the U.S. And, and to kind of give you a background of where we've come from and where we're at now. And so we get back to the question of, uh, is American-made CNC better? Well, I think the answer is yes. And I think, I think what you come down to is, I think there's, there's really about six areas that you could say the American-made machines give you a huge advantage. Remember, the pricing is about the same now. The first is innovation. And the reason I say innovation is because it's so difficult when, when you're an importer and you're dealing with a vendor that's overseas uh, in one of the Asian countries, it's really, really, really difficult to get design changes. And once again, I think that goes back to cultural and communications problems. So it's really hard to come up with a better idea and uh, get it implemented to the marketplace. And in some cases, your better ideas, your competitors are going to have also. Well, it, it, the way we structured this division here at, at, at Shop Saber CNC is we basically do everything here. So all our design and fabrication is done in-house. So 
if, if we if we create something that we think is better, we can get it we can get it to the market very quickly. You know, a good example is is our vacuum systems. If, if you look at our vacuum systems compared to the competitors, there's there's no comparison. You know, we've integrated the vacuum plenums into the machine frames. We feed the table with huge hoses so we get the maximum vacuum up there. You know, even the development of the uh, F4 vacuum pump is, is it was huge because we addressed a problem that had been in the industry as long as I've been in it. So I think innovation is much simpler uh, in terms of innovation. If you look at some of the mechanical stuff, we use finite element analysis to do all of the all of the design work, and that leads to things like our stiffeners on the tool plates. So a company like ShopSaver is in a position to actually make changes very quickly and get them uh, into the marketplace. So I think innovation is, is the f first on the list. Okay, you know, I think another area that we really, really uh, excel in is the components that we use. Now, think about uh, what's required for a CNC router. Now, you have, you know, you can say, yeah, we use the same spindles and we use the same guide rails, but there's a whole lot more to a CNC router than, than the major components. If you open a cabinet up, you see a whole bunch of valves and relays and stuff like that. And I think the importers source that stuff overseas, and they there may be components in there we can't even buy here. So you've either got to get the, an importer to bring the part in for you or find something else that works. You know, ShopSaver, we're a domestic manufacturer and we use domestic components, so pretty much all the things that, that you might need are readily available. I think that's a huge, I think that's a huge uh, advantage for being an American-made machine. You know, there's another aspect of CNC design that has to do with projected life. And one of the things we try to do here in engineering is we try to design every machine to be running 20 years from now. And we do that by the components and how we do the frames and all that kind of stuff. But I think it has to be your philosophy. A good example is we use ball screws and we don't use very many rack and pinions on CNC routers because they're not accurate enough. And the ball screw is gonna maintain that accuracy over a long period of time. Well, if you step back and you look at all that aspect of it, then if your machine lasts longer, then your cost of ownership is much less. So in a lot of instances, these American-made shop savers, the cost of ownership is a lot less than something from China because the life expectancy of it is probably different. You know, I think another huge advantage American manufacturers like shop saver have is the overall machine quality. Part of that's culture, part of that's communications, but you know, one of the things that I always notice when I look at imported machines, especially the Chinese ones, is that the fit and finish is not very good when you, especially when you look underneath. If if you look underneath, and the wells sometimes are not very good, and I think that's just a difference in culture. What's acceptable, you know? If you come over here to the U.S. and you go back in the shop back there where the welders are, and there, that's a very unique trade, and and the welders weld is actually their signature. So. On our machines, you look at a frame inside of, that nobody could really see. That well is just as good as what you see on the outside. So I think I think that has to do with quality. I think that has to do with the culture of the company. Um, if you look at painting, our painting is immaculate. Once again, things you see like that are, are important to us. And, and always, if the details are good, everything else is probably good too. But I think that's a huge advantage ShopSaver has in the marketplace. You know, one of the things I find fascinating is machine control. And it's really funny, you look at some of the machines that are coming in from China and, and you'll see, here's a name brand control. You say, oh, that's got, a, that's got a good control on it. But when you open the cabinet, <laughs> you find out that all the components are something else. So, you know, you may have a name brand control, but the motors aren't that brand and the drives aren't that brand and sometimes the motors are undersized. So it's kind of misleading. You think you're really getting something when you get it, it's not. You know, we take a different approach on machine control. First off, our newest shop saver control is what we call MMP, and MMP stands for Mitsubishi Motion Platform, and it's really rock solid technology. And then but the other part of control is the user interface, so we try to create a simple user interface that would be easy for a new employee, for instance, and, and we make that whole experience consistent across the product line. So if you buy a plasma machine from us, the interface is roughly the same. It's just got some more things added to it that are required for plasma. So I think uh, I think as, as an American company, ShopSaver has a huge advantage in the machine control part. We're really, really good at it. Okay, there's another part of the whole CNC router process that has to do with what's called application. And application is how do you make things, all right? So, um, 
what we try to do in our video series is show you those things. We show you different things. You know, we make guitars and we make we make closets and all kinds of stuff. And we make complex fixture setups so that you see that process. And, and because what happens is you have companies that will sell you CNC to do stuff. Nobody in the company knows how to do it. So how do you think you're going to figure it out? You know, Henry Ford had an interesting saying. He said, you can't teach something you don't know any easier than you can come from somewhere you've never been. So I think you got, you got to factor that in to your CNC purchase. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Shop Saver Minute. You know, I wanted to really dig into the American versus import machines. Thanks for watching. Thank you.